Hey, it's Nate with another piano tutorial. Today we're gonna do Harvest Moon by Neil Young. This was a request, but it's also one of my favorites. I have memories from growing up of my dad playing the Harvest Moon album on the back porch in the summer while he relaxed, and it reminds me of simpler times and puts me in a great mood. I'm gonna teach you a great sounding piano chord accompaniment if you want to play and sing it. I'll include lots of satisfying details, but also options to keep it a little bit simpler and easier. Let's just jump in. So let's start with that iconic melody. It's maybe the most recognizable part of the song. It sounds like this. And I recommend getting the chords and lyrics chart for this song. I put a link down in the description. That'll help you follow along and see where the chords line up with the words you sing. So here's the chords for this part. It's a D, D6, D major seven. For the D, we're going to do in the right hand, D, F sharp, and A. For the D6, we're just going to take that top note and move it up to a B. Um, notice, I think I'm actually going to use 1, 2, and maybe 4 here, and then I can do 1, 2, 5 there. Make the stretch a little easier, especially for the D major 7 part where we're going to stretch all the way up to a C sharp there. And I'm playing this right above the middle C, just right in the middle of your keyboard. So D, D6, D major 7. If that's too much of a stretch for your hand, you can totally omit the D. Just do F sharp and A, F sharp and B, and F sharp and C sharp, because we're going to take care of the D in the left hand. In terms of the rhythm, we're in 4-4 time in this song, so we're going to be thinking like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Each measure gets four counts, so it's like a D chord for the first two beats of the measure, a D6 for the second two beats of that measure, and then a full four counts of D major 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For the left hand, I'm gonna move it down two octaves lower than where we're playing with the right hand, and I'm just gonna play a D with my pinky here on the first count of each measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. Now you can keep it simple like that, but I'm going to show you a few more layers of rhythm to really get it sounding like the recording. For starters, on the first beat, we're not going to play the right hand. We're just going to hit the left hand on beat one and then do that D chord on beat two. So that first measure there is going to be like one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Four. For the second measure, we need to think about eighth notes. So that's dividing the beat in half. So we're not just thinking about the down beats on the counts, the one, two, three, four. We're also thinking about the one and two and three and four and. And in that second measure, we're going to play those D major sevens on the and after one and the and after two. And we're still playing the left hand on beat one there. So that measure is going to sound like one and two and three, four. Again, one and two and three four the whole thing one two three four one and two and three four one two three four one and two and three four at this point it's really sounding like the recording sounds great one more layer really gets us there we're going to think about the left hand playing fifths instead of playing just the d we're also going to play the thumb five steps above that's a fifth so the thumb plays a and it, rather than just plunking it out like that we're going to break it up into a rhythm where we do the d on beat one and then the a on beat three kind of just rocking back and forth one two three four one two three four spend a little time here if you need just getting used to that pattern because we're gonna do it all throughout the song so when you put it all together it sounds like this one two three four one and two and three four so left right together four left right right left four left front four one and two and three four get it to click into play slow and then you can crank that speed up and it'll sound great you can also do an extra hit on beat four there like one two three four one and two and three 
four. And this pattern happens a lot throughout this song, sometimes repeated two times, sometimes repeated four times. You'll notice on the chord chart, I just shorthanded it to D with a little asterisk after it. That means play this chord progression, and then I'd let you know how many times to play it. Let's get into the verses. The first chord you need is an E minor seven. In the right hand, we're gonna do a G, a B, a D, and an E. You can do them all together like that, maybe using first, second, fourth, and fifth fingers. And then in the left hand, we're gonna do an E and a B. And it's on that for four measures before it goes back to the D. One, two, three. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have to say. And you can do that pattern here if you like. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more rhythm than that. I'm actually just gonna do quarter notes in the right hand. So just playing the chord on every count. One, two, three, four. I've also got the sustain pedal down. So it sounds a little smoother. You just gotta remember, if you're using the sustain pedal, to lift it every time the chord changes. I have a video all about that if you wanna check it out. And in the left hand, we're gonna do that same fifth finger thumb on one, two, three, four, just like we were doing in the intro. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just get in that groove and then we go to Well, you'll notice on the chord chart, I actually put two asterisks on these Ds for the first two lines of the song, because there's a slightly different pattern, but it's optional. I'll show it to you in a little bit. So after two lines just like that, there's two more lines that are really similar, but you'll see on the chord chart, it says G6. The G6 is literally the same thing we were doing for the E minor seven. It's just G, B, D, and E. The difference is this time, instead of the E and the B in the left hand, we're moving our left hand up to a G and a D, so the chord is kind of being reharmonized. Sounds really nice. This is for the. But there's a full moon rising. Let's go dancing in the light. And it definitely does that melody there. Let me play through the whole verse as we have it so far. And let me just say, I'm playing this in the original key of D. It's a little high for my voice, but that's what you get for trying to sing a Neil Young song. Here we go. Come a little bit closer. Hear what I have to say. Just like children sleeping We could dream this night away But there's a full moon rising Let's go dancing in the light We know where the music's playing Let's go out and feel the night I'm gonna get to the chorus in just a minute, but I wanna give you a couple extra details that you can do. So as I kind of alluded to on the recording, you'll notice that in the first half of this verse, the guitar doesn't do that melody as we learned it exactly. It does something a little kind of lower pitch, just a little bit of a variation that sounds like this. One reason why I think this is optional is I never actually noticed that there was a difference here um, until I sat down to learn this to teach it. So anyway, it starts with a D inversion in the right hand. So instead of like that, the A is on the bottom. We got A, D, F sharp. We're gonna hit that a couple times. Again, then drop that middle note down to a C sharp. And then we have this little melody here where we move the hand down maybe with your second and fourth fingers do E and A and then F sharp and A. One more time. The exact time in there is like 
One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. A lot of off beats, um, but the left hand is just gonna hold it down the same way it's been doing. So it's like one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four really hard to count and play at the same time. But yeah, feel free to throw that in or skip it. Other thing that I wanted to show you is that cool melody played on harmonics on the acoustic guitar. It sounds like this. And that happens at the beginning of every other measure of E minor seven in the first two lines of the verse. It's E, B, G, D, E. Um, it's kind of a big stretch there. Just kind of follow your hand. You don't have to actually stretch because you can let go of that E as your hand kind of travels down. I'm not gonna pinpoint the rhythm because it gets pretty tricky. We would have to subdivide further than eighth notes. If you wanna make this part work, you can feel out the rhythm by ear. But the way it fits in is gonna be like. Come a little bit closer. If I had three hands, I would do those chords the whole time while that higher melody played. But um, because I don't, I just sort of am throwing that in and then just kind of picking up where I can with the right hand chords. But it's kind of a lot to play and sing at the same time. Again, totally optional. Final kind of more advanced detail I just want to mention is just to fill out the rhythm on that main riff that we were doing. the. I might do some of that, like a rocking back and forth of uh, the top two notes and the bottom notes on eighth notes, like one, two, three, and four, and might do it there too. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and anyway, just some kind of next level details if you want to work on them. So let's do the chorus. It starts with a very complicated sounding chord, the A9 sus4. Here's how you play it. It's literally the exact same thing as we've been doing for the E minor seven and the G6. It's just, it's reharmonized with A as the bass note, but it's still that G, B, D, and E. Really cool, and it makes it kind of convenient to learn and play. I'm not gonna do the fifths in the left hand for the chorus. I'm just gonna hit octaves on the A's, just low A's. If that's too much of a stretch, you can just do a single A in whichever octave you like better. So it's gonna be like, because I'm still in love with you. So here's that A7. Notice I didn't change anything in my left hand and I kept the outside notes of the right hand chord, but instead of doing those two notes with my second and fourth finger, I just move, take those away and put my third finger down on the C sharp. It's a really nice voicing of an A7, A dominant seven. Because I'm still in love with you. I want to see you dance again because I'm still in love with you on this harvest moon. And the chorus ends with uh, four times through that D progression. And I'm going to keep that quarter note pulse going in the right hand because I'm still in love with you. I'm gonna add a little bit more rhythm in the left hand too, just to give it some more movement. Um, I'm gonna play not only on beat one, I'm gonna also play on the and after two. So like one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. It's optional, but it's gonna sound like this. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. Just gives it a little bit more bounce. Final detail if you like here is I'm just gonna do a little walk up on my way back to D. So from A, I'm gonna go to B, C sharp. Rhythmically, that's gonna be like, still in love with you on this harvest moon. So on this harvest moon. I want to mention an alternative to the A9 sus4. I know I mentioned my dad earlier. He used to play this song on acoustic guitar. And instead of the A9 sus4, which is not a chord that most guitar players just know how to do, he would do an E minor seven, which again, you can just keep the same right hand, but do um, an E bass note. And maybe it's just because I heard him playing it that way a lot growing up, but it sounds really good to me that way. It makes that harmony uh, chord change a little bit more accessible, especially for uh, just a solo version that doesn't have a band and a bass player. So you could throw that in. Because I'm still in love with you. I 
think I will probably keep it the way Neil Young did it, though, with the... Because I'm still in love with you. Okay, that's really all you need to know to play this song. After that chorus, there's another verse. It's just like the first verse, but with different words. Then there's another chorus, just like the chorus we just learned. If you're just playing it, you and piano, that actually might be a good place to end it. Um, on the recording, it goes into this sort of half verse instrumental section with the harmonica um, before doing a final chorus. So I'll show you the structure for that harmonica solo. It's kind of as if you're just playing the second half of the verse. So instead of the E minor seven, you're just straight to the G6. But the interesting thing about it is that the first time, instead of doing the high version, it does th this one. But then for the second one, it is going to do the does that two times before launching into that final chorus. When that final chorus ends, you can just end on a D, just like that. D, F sharp, A, let it ring out, song's over. Okay, thank you for sticking with me. I'm going to play a full cover of the song now so you can see how all those different parts fit together. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do that. Hit the little bell so you'll know when I put out more videos like this. Give it a like. Let me know in the comments what songs you want to hear next. Um, maybe I'll do some more Neil Young songs. This was my first Neil Young tutorial, but I love a lot of his songs. Anyway, here's my version of Harvest Moon. I'm still in love with you I wanna see you 